Dear Mom, Dad, and Ethel is unique in several respects. It's a combination of actual wartime letters, a love story, and extensive historical research. I know of no other book on the market that combines these three elements into a seamless whole. And this isn't a book about a John Wayne or Rambo shoot 'em up type. It's about an ordinary enlisted man trying to make sense of some extraordinary situations. My father served in the 327th Fighter Control Squadron in Western Europe from 1943 to 1945. That was part of the 9th Air Force. And while he was overseas, he wrote some 300 letters home to his parents and sister Ethel. My paternal grandfather kept the letters, and shortly before his death in 1961, he gave them to my father. And in the late 90s, we got together and said this would make a great book. We couldn't tell this as a straight nonfiction because after 60 years, my father's memory was very good, but not perfect. And we wanted to protect the anonymity of certain folks who we don't always flatter. Unlike the combat soldier who was usually in the field, fighter control soldiers lived and worked alongside civilians in urban and semi-urban war zones. So we take you to the mess halls and the bunkhouses, but we also take you to the London tube shelters, the cobblestone streets of Bervier, the rolling hills and white farmhouses of Stormbear. You have this very toxic mix of terror weapons, an energy crisis, food shortages, and insurgent elements. You had buzz bombs and V2 rockets coming into Bervier by the tens each day during this period. And we have a scene in Dear Mom, Dad, and Ethel where my father is in the radio truck with his corporal, where a V1 or buzz bomb comes overhead and the growling sound gets louder and louder and the corporal tries to take a drag from a cigarette to calm his nerves, but he can't do it. He simply cannot put the lit match in contact with the tobacco. It gives you an idea of the tension level involved there. My father fell in love with a Belgian seamstress in Verviers when he was stationed there in the fall of 1944. My father sneaks back into Verviers. He was worried about his girlfriend, Denise. The city was closed, protected by MPs. It was extremely dangerous for him to do this. He could have been arrested, he could have been shot. But he wanted to be near Denise. He would die for her, nobly or foolishly. So it really is a love story. The war changed my father. He was a happy-go-lucky kid from the Bronx. And by the time the war is over and he returns back to the States, he realizes that war is more than a bunch of guys in fantastic brown leather jackets flying happily up into the wild blue yonder. It's about privation. It's about fear. It's about loneliness. It's about boredom. It's about the role of fate in life and death. I hope people are touched uh, and inspired by my father's story. It was about a specific place at a specific time and a very specific aspect of World War II that people ordinarily don't get a close look at.